What's up friends, welcome to my channel where we're doing music covers, original music, album reviews, song reviews, a little social commentary here and there, whatever the day calls for. And uh, it's been a while, but I'm actually going to do a social commentary segment today. Um, I've really been kind of just not really bothering with politics anymore, you know? And I really only do on the channel when it's something that I feel strongly about or really want to talk about, and that's and that's rare. This is mostly a music channel, so um, you're not going to see me do these often. But this one I kind of think is a big deal. Um, when I first like saw like an article on this, I was like, I don't know, this might just be bullshit. But more and more people have started to talk about it, and it turns out it's actually uh, true. It has been said that if Joe Biden doesn't feel like running again in 2024, doesn't feel up to it, a 82-year-old Bernie Sanders is going to probably make a third go of it. Um, now, many, many people have made the assumption already that Joe Biden isn't going to try again. And I think that's just wishful thinking for people. I don't know why we make this assumption. He's not the only old fart in Washington. They're full of them. Full of them. You know what I mean? And a lot of them, you know, if for all of Biden's faults, I'd rather see some of them retire. Uh, Joe Manchin being a big one. He's an old fart and he stands in the way of everything good like he's a corrupt piece of garbage and so is his entire family, you know, so You know, I never made the assumption that he wasn't going to run again and he's already made comments that he He's planning on it. So I mean this is just kind of like a shot in the dark, but If he decides he's not up to it I think Bernie's gonna try again and uh yeah, that's probably the best thing the Democrats could ask for, because he's really the only reason why anybody would really feel strongly about voting for for Democrats, because Joe Biden's been pretty ineffectual, um, and the people that they're floating around are even worse than he is. You got like Mayor Pete and Kamala Harris, like it's, it's they're going to lose, like. Bernie ran again, you know, people would actually have a reason to go out and vote for, for, uh, for Democrats. Um, I actually think, like, I'm of the belief that the third party can't win at, at this point in time, especially because of, like, even what happened with Bernie, like, the last two elections, um, there's a stronghold, there's a corporate stronghold on the entire political process, and if we can't even, uh, not be shady about the two-party system like what's a third like a third party i feel like would just get eaten alive but bernie sanders has enough name recognition and he's the most liked senator in the country one of the most liked sitting political figures in the country that if he ran as an independent he would get more traction than anybody else would and he would not be beholden to the democrats and have all this pressure from them and you know but he's not going to do that. He's if he's if he runs again, an 82 year old Bernie Sanders, he's going to run against a Democrat. I think we all know that. Um, but uh, give me a second here. I'm going to pull up on my phone the exact article that I found first because it has something really important here to to get this going. Okay, uh, Faz Shakir what, is Bernie's campaign manager. He was in 2020. And that already kind of raises an eyebrow because the strategy in 2020, it wasn't good. Um, but that guy says that if people give him pushback this time, he's going to say, Senator Sanders, and I quote, Senator Sanders is putting forward an extremely popular vision for the Democratic Party that will win back critical support that we have lost. In fact, Bernie wants to build power for the working class and take on the corporate socialism that our political system currently favors. Are you going to say that? Because that's not how it was worded last time or the time before. And um, basically, if he's going to do this again, he needs to completely revamp his his uh, his team, get new people, get new strategists, just. Uh, take a whole new approach because um you know his wording and uh just like some of the decisions he made the way he dropped out just like a lot of his 
2020 campaign could have been a lot better and I feel like a lot of the mistakes that he made were just kind of set up there just kind of like foolish especially for someone who's been in this game as long as he has I mean he's been fighting for this stuff for a long time so the question a lot of people are asking is now that they've heard this should he do it absolutely he should do it he should take a whole new approach but he should definitely do it um there is a whole uh stigma right now that uh there should be age limits and uh we should get new blood in like the left wing circles and i think from what we've seen already with like the disappointments of like the squad people and the congressional progressive uh, fraud caucus those are all younger people or at least people that are younger than bernie and they've all just been huge disappointments aoc is a, me a media creation she's she's useless man uh if you think that a third bernie presidency would be worse than an aoc presidency i, I think you're a little too wrapped up in the identity politics and we're going to get to that I i'm I'm just going to say, in a hypothetical sense, if he were to run again, which Biden's already talking like he is going to run anyway, like this might not even happen, but it might. It might. If if in 2024 he's too senile or, or too far gone or he just doesn't feel physically up to another four years, Bernie's talking like he's going to do it again. And if he does, I just uh, have four points that I think... Very strongly that he should change. He needs to completely revamp his strategy if he's going to do it. And I'm just one guy. One guy he's never going to fucking know about. But uh, not everything he, that I'm going to say is directed to him. It's directed towards his base and like the voters and progressives in general. Um, so, number one. Number one thing. And this is the one that's directed to Bernie. you got to disavow socialism. Stop embracing that word. Okay, because in, in America, it is a scare word. Uh, even pe a lot of people on the right who know what it means and know that Bernie isn't actually looking to turn America into a socialist country, they're going to say it anyway. And stop giving them their soundbite. If he, if a potential 2024 running Bernie Sanders goes out there and starts talking about what democratic socialism means to me and trying to like, Differ, spend time differentiating what social democrat is for this term and that term it's over it's over before it even starts take a different approach and it's not hard instead disavow socialism attack the socialism that already exists in the country corporate socialism and that's an easy way to go after republicans because that model the trickle-down economics model that is corporate socialism we already have socialism in america and it's anti-worker and it's Republican-led, and the Democrats and the establishment further it also. So, disavow it. Don't call yourself that anymore, especially because it's not what your platform is. Stop giving these people this easy way to attack you. You need to completely change that about yourself. Don't call yourself a Democratic Socialist for fuck's sake. Don't do it. Um... This one is more towards the voters. No woke stuff, man. We have to, we, we as Bern, like Bernie's base needs to do everything they can to separate themselves from these uh, pseudo woke, virtue signaling, social justice warrior pieces of shit. These, these pink hair trust fund kids on these college campuses that are just out there calling people racist all the time, incels all the time, and just like. These people don't fucking stand for anything, man. And they have completely t overtaken uh, the perception of what the left is. And they aren't even, they're not leftist. Uh, you got to go all in on free speech absolutism. You have to, uh, it doesn't matter how gross something a comedian is saying or something anybody's saying, you these people that want to cancel everything and make all, all these uh, broad generalizations about people, like, we need to separate ourselves from them. 100%. Because people are sick of it, man. 
I certainly am, and I am, I do consider myself like a, a left-leaning person, so, you know, the, the right hate them, the left, the real left hate them, they're the most annoying fucking people on the planet, next to like QAnon and the people that are batshit on that side, like, these people don't stand for anything, so since all they care about is identity, let them go vote for Kamala Harris and see how fucking far they get, like, we gotta separate ourselves from all this identity bullshit, uh, because it alienates people, you know, like, uh, like these, uh, people that call themselves lefts that are, like, pushing all this, uh, third wave feminist garbage, you know, there's a guy out there that, you know, is an underpaid worker, and he got screwed over by, like, the family court system, they took his kid because he was the man, he's working his ass off to pay child support he shouldn't be paying this that this woman is just gonna blow on no he's not even gonna spend on the kid and that's what he's spending all his money on he doesn't want to hear that shit we want him we want his vote stop alienating people uh people who just like joke around like like tell edgy jokes if somebody tells an edgy joke even if it's in poor taste it's a fucking joke man like don't look for reasons to call people racists. Don't look for reasons to call people sexist. Don't, like, you aren't any fucking better than these people. We need to separate ourselves from these, these pink-haired trust fund kids because they have completely destroyed the perception of the left. And we want some of these voters because these, these are normal, sane, rational people. Um, there's a lot of gettable people out there, man. I've met a lot of right-leaning kind of people who kind of open to some of the stuff that Bernie has to say and they hate Biden you know but they're not like so they're not so far off into this like uh Trump call and uh you know a lot of these people who make these talking points anytime a social program or a way to help working people is advertised we just say like uh get a job or like they know what they're doing a lot of them aren't dumb. Their bottom line is being threatened. They're probably profiting off the backs of other people's labor. They're the ones who are getting the handouts. Those are the socialists, the corporate socialists. Bernie needs to go all in on these people. All in on these people. So ixnay on the woke stay. It's not going to get us anywhere with that. Um, all, all that stuff, that, like the identity politics. Let Kamala Harris take all those people. Because they're going to lose, like... The, the people that the Democrats want to run in 2024, if Joe does retire, you know, they're all losers. They're going to lose. And then we're going to go back to the Stone Age because the right have some, they're just on steroids with their, with their ideology right now. Uh, like, I would consider, like, the QAnon and all that stuff. Just like the far right mentality, especially towards working people, is just like it's worse than it's ever been. Like, and and there are some real, real like racists and homophobes and xenophobia stuff out there, and like uh, people making up shit about open borders all the time and like hating immigrants. Like Trump, like really emboldened every single dumb dumb with these terrible views in the country and, and made it acceptable because Trump got on the stage and said all these all these things. So. You know, don't be just as radical and dumb on the other end of it with all this woke stuff. And if you are going to do that, don't try and just don't associate yourself with Bernie because you're going to do more damage than them. You always have. Um, so the next one is don't like this is for the followers and for Bernie himself. Don't spend all this time just talking about Trump all the time. Yes, Trump is evil, but don't treat him like he's a unique evil. He's not um, a unique evil. Like he, uh, if you do that, people just think you're like a CNN partisan hack who just is talking about Trump all the time because you don't like his mean tweets. There's so many reasons not to like Trump besides his tweets. You know, it's just a stupid uh, straw man that people on the other side like they make up, they like to make up our reasons for us, like, why they don't like them, and it's just like, they're so in a bubble that they do not realize all the 
things he did do and didn't do that lost him this election. They're still not accepting that he lost the election. It, it's just insane. And they don't, they're so far in that bubble that they can't possibly imagine that there's anything they did, that he did, that Trump did, that lost us for him. Yeah. So, but don't spend all the time talking about him, you know. I, George Bush was worse, worse than Trump, you know. You just folk if you spend all this time on anti Trumpism, it's not gonna do any good, you know? Just focus on workers. Workers, workers, workers. And that goes back to like the no woke stuff. You can group all the marginalized people in this country to one demographic, working poor. Um, working poor people whose who need their wages raised, whose labor have been exploited for years and years and years. They come in all creeds and races. Um, everybody's getting fucked out here, man. And, you know, our, our model, our economic not model has just become, you know, you got the guy on top just sitting there watching everybody else do all the work. And... He isn't doing dick. Nobody's going to notice if he's there or not there. He's price gouging the customers, putting that in his pocket, underpaying the employees, and putting the fruits of their labor in his pocket and running out the back door with all the money. That's the number one thing that we need to fight against and not all this. You know, wokeness is just a divide and conquer strategy. Um, and it's just been a way for uh, corporations too, to... to uh, do like a divide and conquer strategy and just kind of virtue signal. And that's why the Biden administration has latched onto this wokeness so much because they can do this fake spoken word advocation for not being uh, racist or sexist or homophobic or whatever, but they're not actually making any policy changes. Like the difference between leftism and wokeism is like leftism is we need to stop. CIA and the NSA spying on people because it's unconstitutional. Wokeness is we're going to include LGBT and, and minority groups to spy on people with us. I mean, that's the difference, you know. Focus on workers. Focus on workers, man. Um, and the last one. Know what policies of yours are, are popular and which ones aren't. And the ones that are popular, push them, push them, push them. Medicare for all popular policy, um, living wage, popular policy, um, legalizing marijuana, getting nonviolent drug offenders out of jail, popular policy, um, you know, defund the police. We definitely need some criminal justice reform in a serious, serious, serious way, but that's not a popular policy. I wouldn't lead with it. Um, I wouldn't even talk about it. Get elected first. Make those changes then, because... That one just doesn't pull well. No, it doesn't pull well. Don't advertise gun control at all because it's unconstitutional. It's stupid. It's the worst thing that left-wing people latch on to. All it does is disarm uh, the citizens. It gives law enforcement more power. Criminals and violent criminals are going to get it no matter what. Gun control is fucking stupid. We need to just get that out of the progressive platform altogether. It's, it's dumb. Uh, it's the easiest argument to shoot down. And if you if you go in on that, It'll get shot down. Don't even mention gun control. And don't enact it when you get elected either. Just, it's dumb. It's dumb. So, yeah. If he's going to do this, and I, I hope he does. I, I think, I think, uh, I would rather have an 82-year-old Bernie Sanders run this country than any of these new progressive, so-called progressive people out there. Because they're all fakes. And they've shown it with all the things they've done and not done so far. I don't think age means shit, you know. You don't hear too much woke speak coming from Bernie Sanders and actually giving a shit about marginalized people. He was doing that shit in the 80s and the 90s before it was even cool, man. Uh, you know, he was defending, uh, you know, uh, gay people in the military in like 93, 94, 95 when it was cool to just call everything gay and call like, you know, he's a real deal on this stuff. And, you know, I'd rather have the OG than... These like identity politics people, because once if they ever would get elected, and I don't think they would, because 
they just don't have what it takes. They're just gonna cave to the establishment, man. They, it's they're in it for them. They're media creations. AOC is a media creation. The Congressional Progressive Caucus, they're, they're frauds. Like, you know Bernie's going to do what he says he's going to do. And like I said, this is all just hypothetical, but if he runs again and starts talking about being a democratic socialist, it's over. It's over before it even begins. Change the approach. Get different strategists. You can make, you can make the same point and disavow socialism. Socialism that already exists. So, if this... One in a million chance that Biden doesn't run and Bernie actually runs a third time happens. Do I think that anybody's going to do any of these things I've said? And do I think that we're not going to approach it in the most dumb and ineffectual way possible and blow the whole thing like has been blown time and time again? Do I think we're going to do things differently this time? Nah, not really, man. 